Hi, everyone. Thanks very much for uh, joining us uh, for part of your Friday afternoon. Um, as Ayani mentioned, uh, my name is Stephanie Walker. I'm the head of product at CEB. And before I came to CEB, I worked at a firm with 14 or so attorneys. Um, but most of us had slightly different practices or specialties. So it wasn't always possible to walk down the hall and get a good template from a colleague or to even get the kind of strategic insights insight that you were seeking. Um, I also remember what it was like to be a new associate at a law firm and how long it took me to piece the individual assignments that I was getting into the big picture of an entire legal matter from start to finish and how everything fit together and what the job actually was from start to finish. Um, that's why I'm very pleased to be giving you a sneak peek into our new legal know-how tool, Practitioner. So what is practitioner? Uh, well, it is California's first, it's the first California specific legal know-how solution on the market. And some of you may be asking yourselves, okay, but what's legal know-how? Um, legal know-how are tools that are meant to help you move more quickly from traditional legal research, meaning practice guides and cases and statutes to the actual creation of work product, uh, drafting your emails, drafting your pleadings, writing an email, advising a client, making those strategic decisions that help you move on in your matter. Um, so practitioner to help you do that offers four categories of these granular tactical documents focused on your practice area. And those document types are how-to guides, which give you step-by-step -step guidance on how to perform a specific task or how to, how to navigate local county procedure where appropriate. Um, strategy notes, giving you that expert insight that so many people crave. Uh, charts and checklists and annotated standard documents. And then what practitioner does is it takes those documents and it organizes them into a fifth category called workflows, which organize all of the resources relevant to a particular type of legal matter. For example, if I'm an employment attorney, I might want a workflow uh, that takes me from the start to the finish of a disability discrimination dispute. So this is why we think practitioner is a valuable tool. Um, it's California focused. It focuses on California law, guidance from California judges, and you don't have to waste time adapting templates that were originally written for use in another state. Um, and the detail is still there when you need it. Along with access to these new practitioner resources and these legal know-how resources, a subscription to practitioner will still include access to our practice guides and our primary law research tool with TrueCite, our case law citator, so you can make sure you're citing to good law. Um, but I think it'll be easier for me to just show you what I mean, so let's dive right into the demo. All right. So what you are now looking at is practitioner. And this is the home screen. Um, and as you can see, you can browse between practice areas and see the major subtopics and coverage under each practice area. If I'm interested in under employment law, wage and hour content, I can click on that and then get a landing page specific to wage and hour disputes. And I can see all of the resources that are pertinent to wage and hour, including a further outline of the subcategories under wage and hour. So I can browse for what's really specific to my needs. Then underneath, I can see any workflows that are pertinent to the topic that I'm under. And I can see all of the resources and the types of documents that are pertinent to wage and hour disputes. And obviously, if you want to get back to where you started from, you've got these breadcrumbs at the top of your screen so you don't lose your place and you can get back to where you started. Um, so to help me give a more granular look at workflows, let's assume that I'm a trust and estates lawyer and I do a lot of litigation. Uh, so if I click into trust and probate litigation, 
similar to what you just saw for wage and hour disputes, you can see all of the information pertinent to trust and probate, all of the subcategories that are available, the different subtopics and issues and types of trust and probate disputes. And again, I can scroll down to see the available workflows, or I can see the different types of granular documents if I'd rather, <clears throat> excuse me, if I'd rather search for a specific type of resource. But going up to the workflows, so let's say that what I'm really interested in is forcing the fiduciary to account. So I can click into this, and now you can see what a workflow looks like. It's really meant to give you a rough chronology of the major phases of work necessary for your type of legal matter. So you can see these headings. You start with client intake and retention. You go through pre-filing issues responding to the petition, down through settlement procedures, and obtaining approval of settlement. So you can really see how each task or each phase of work fits into uh, the overall scheme of your case or your legal matter. And I think this is really great for a couple of reasons. First, um, especially if we're handling multiple matters by ourselves, um, it can get easy to get lost in terms of what you're doing, and it's just helpful to have a nice reminder that even if I am, you know, at a specific phase in the case, I can look forward to settlement and not look and not lose sight of the major issues and tactical considerations that I should keep in mind. Also, if you have associates in your office, this is a fantastic way for associates to start to learn and kind of self-train, how do I handle a case from start to finish? How does my you know, individual assignment fit into the big picture? And how does it help the overall flow of what we're doing for the client? So to dive into a workflow, uh, let's say that I want to look at um, initial case evaluation. So if you open up one of these subcategories, you get all of the resources organized by type that are pertinent to this topic. And if I want to see a strategy note for understanding no contest clauses, I can click into that document and see what's there. I've got this great document outline on the left-hand side where I can use to navigate through the document. And you can see all of the issues, including practical scenarios that I might want to consider. So I really get a really good strategy and tactical overview of this issue. You can see there's practical, there's practice notes, there's cautions, there's examples, there's clickable links to statutes and um, referenced cases and code sections. And then I click the back button and I'm back into my workflow. Um, and then, what I also really want to highlight for everyone is the extent to which we are California specific and the fact that we have a county specific county level procedural guidance. Uh, we hear from a lot of attorneys frequently that they practice in three or four or five or more counties on a regular basis. And yes, we all know how to go to the California rules of court and the probate rules and the local court websites and the judge's standing orders and all of that information to try to piece together what the proper procedure is, but it can be time consuming. It can be tricky. And especially if you're bouncing between multiple counties, maybe it's helpful to save time and get all of that information consolidated in one place and also get some insight into how the judges in that county want things done. So here you can see under pre-filing matters, there's review local probate litigation rules. If I open this up, one of the resources there are how-to guides <clears throat> telling you how to do things in specific counties. Um, and let's say for purposes of this, so I'm, I'm practicing in Orange County. So I want to click on the how-to guide for how to navigate local trust and state rules in Orange County. And you can see that this document was contributed to by a judge, a probate judge in uh, Orange County. And you get these amazing step-by-step -step guidance on exactly what you have to do to follow the proper procedure. And it does cite to the local, local forms, local rules, there's clickable links to all the resources that you need, but everything's put into perspective with practice notes and cautions. So you can get yourself, you can either learn from scratch very quickly or you can get yourself up to speed very quickly. Especially if, like I said, you're going between 
uh, multiple, multiple counties, or you need a quick refresher and you're just looking to save time. So let's go back to the main trust and probate litigation page. And let me show you a few other types of resources that are included here. So um, why don't we take a look at charts and checklists to give you a look at what those might look like. So here we've got cause of action checklists for prenuptial or postnuptial agreements. If I click into that, again, you'll see your really easy to navigate document outline if you wanna to skip to a specific portion of the document. And you can see um, in checklist form, threshold requirements. So that you can kind of literally print this out and check off issues so you know you've considered everything and that you've uh, not missed any issue and you've taken everything into account. And then I also want to show you an example of our standard documents. So let's click into, hmm, what would be a good one? Let's look at this, the ex parte motion to release original will lodged with court for forensic examination. So here you've got a sample standard document. And once again, you can navigate to the section of the document that you're interested in um, using this document outline. And up on screen, you can see uh, the bracketed fields that have shadows on them to clearly highlight what information you have to adapt with your own particular case. You can also see these guidance notes. So here I've got the actual text of the standard document, but here I've got CEB guidance notes telling you how and when and why to use and adapt the standard language. And some of the guidance notes might be procedural to update you on the technical and procedural requirements for this particular document. Others might be kind of strategic or tactical notes or give you examples. And then if you scroll down further, you can see there's also alternate clauses. So uh, depending on the facts of your particular matter, you might see, um, you might wanna use option A versus option B. And the last thing that I wanna highlight for you in terms of these standard documents is the download function. Um, if I click on download, I'm given two options. I can either download with comments or without. Both options will give you a download in Word, but uh, if I want a cleaner template with just the, the, the language itself, I can download without comments or if I want those additional notes, I can download with. And you'll get a very simple Word document that you can easily cut and paste into your own uh, pleading paper or forms or templates for, for your practice. Um, before I move on any further, Ayani, are there, are there any questions so far that I might wanna tackle before we keep going? Yeah, we have a few quick ones. One is, Great. will the standard documents integrate with the central forms? Um, and the second is, um, what are the practice areas that will be offered? Yeah, great question. So um, I'm going to, uh, I'll cover in more detail the practice areas that we're gonna cover, that we cover at the end and give you more details about what our plans are to build out the product. Currently, we have three litigation modules. We've got a general uh, litigation practice and procedure module. We've got uh, trust and probate litigation, and we have employment litigation. And I'll go into a little bit more detail at the end so you can see kind of, because I know some of those are fairly large umbrella topics, so you can get a sense of the coverage. Um, and then the other question was for essential forms. It doesn't integrate with essential forms uh, currently, uh, and we don't, we don't have any active plans to do that. Um, currently, it's just meant to be a very quick reference tool so that you can create attorney-drafted forms and, as quickly and efficiently as possible. Um, if an essential forms integration is something that you'd be interested in, please feel free to shoot us an email and tell us more about um, what that would mean to you. We always wanna hear uh, what customers would prefer in terms of integrations and further development. So that would be very helpful. Okay, thank you. Great. 
All right. Um, so now you've gotten a pretty good view of the, the browse feature and the workflows and some of the document types. Uh, let's go back to the practitioner homepage and also do just a search because sometimes you know exactly what you want. You don't need to browse through to see what's there. You just want to get that one document that you're looking for. So um, let's say that I'm interested in refreshing my memory on how ex parte procedures work in particular counties. Um, so I'm just going to search for ex parte procedures. And I've got 175 documents, which is too much for me to sort through. So I can do a couple things. I can filter by practice areas. So here I'm gonna stick with trust in the states and say that I'm interested in that procedure. And I can also filter by court. And this is a feature that I love. So let's say that I'm, I'm, I only want to know information pertinent to LA County. So now I'm down to two documents that are exactly what I want. And I can click into how to navigate local ex parte procedures and trust in a state litigation for LA. And once again, you can see that uh, judges on the bench in Los Angeles have contributed to this. And you get this great step-by-step -step information on exactly what to do and how to comply. And you even get these great judges perspective notes where appropriate. Um, so you really understand that you're doing things correctly and you're interpreting <laughs> those local procedures the way that they want you to. Um, so I think that's probably a pretty good overview of practitioner. I'm going to go back to the home page again. So um, on my, you can see I've got a little free trial going on my account right now. What you see on my screen is the coverage that we have. Um, but let me go back to the PowerPoint presentation and try and answer that question a little bit more fully. Um, so just to reiterate what we think practitioner can do for you, um, we really think that it can save you time and effort when you're drafting an unfamiliar document or help you diligently update and adapt your existing forms. Um, workflows really help you strategize and think ahead so you never miss a step and you never lose sight of what's coming next. And you can get that strategic and tactical guidance that's so useful from other experienced lawyers in your field to see how they handle the specific issue, how they structure the document, um, and really give you those context clues to help you handle your own matter. And then going to back to the question of what does practitioner currently cover? This is what it covers. As I said before, there are currently three modules for litigation practice and procedure. Um, the real focus so far is drafting and responding to complaints, removal to federal court, discovery, motion practice, ex parte procedures, summary judgment, trial prep and trial, including drafting motions in limine and prepping documents for trial and that sort of thing. Um, in the employment realm, the core focus right now is uh, what you see most often, wage and hour disputes, including PAGA, discrimination and harassment, wrongful termination, some leave laws um, disputes. And under trust and probate litigation, there's probate procedure and local probate rules, as well as a broad range of probate and trust disputes, uh, forcing fiduciaries to account some elder law financial abuse, a broad, broad coverage of the trust and probate litigation matters that, that pop up. Um, now, as to where we're going in the future with this, um, we are planning, we're currently working on a business litigation module, which should be available in the fall, um, followed by a real property litigation module. And sometime in 2021, we would like to turn our attention to some transactional or advisory modules as well. So it's not just litigation based. And if there are any particular areas of coverage that you really want to see, obviously let us know. We're very interested in that information. We do our homework and talk to people as we're developing this mod these, uh, these modules, but we, we always want to hear from customers um, for what they're really looking for and what their needs are. So that is everything that I had. Uh, thank you so much for spending part of your Friday with us. We didn't want to take up too much of your time. We really appreciate your interest in practitioner. And I will stay on the line to answer any questions that you have. Annie, do we, it looks like we have a few questions coming in. What, what have we got? Let's see. One says, would we be purchased? 
purchasing by module and do we have to have an on law subscription? So this is a completely separate product from on law. So um, you basically be, uh, but I think the best way to answer your question is that um, this would, this product practitioner would go over and above what you have in OnLaw. So in other words, OnLaw is pretty much focusing on secondary sources. What practitioner covers is the secondary sources in your practice area, also primary law with a case law citator, so you can make sure you're citing to good law and do your case law research, plus all of the practitioner resources, those new document types and workflows that I just walked you through, so that um, all integrated together and cross-referenced so all the links work. So it's, it's, a, it's a broader universe of resources and is a little bit more comprehensive in the types of resources that are offered. Um, you do, you will have the chance to either um, subscribe to specific practice areas or kind of the unlimited module where you get all the secondary sources that CEB offers plus all of the practitioner resources that all of the know-how resources that we offer. So you can either subscribe by, um, by uh, practice area or go all in, depending on what the needs of your practice are. Um, I also see a comment that they'd like to see practitioner for business law. Great. Um, it's definitely on our to-do list. We'll, we'll work on that and we'll, we'll definitely keep you in mind when we're, uh, when we're developing that material. Um, I also see some questions about pricing and is pricing available. Um, I can, I don't want to give you uh, quotes to, um, I don't want to go too in detail to give you wrong information, but I can tell you kind of where pricing starts for a solo attorney. So I believe that pricing starts at 260 a month. And again, what that includes is a, a full subscription to your practice area. So all of the practitioner materials for that practice area, all of the practice guides and access to the primary law and search uh, with Citator. It looks like there is also a question about where, when can we sign up. I believe um, there will be an email sent out after this webinar giving people more information and also um, I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong guys, but offering access to a free trial if you're interested. Yes, that's, that's correct. correct. Great. So yeah, we'll, we'll send an email to anyone who attended this webinar and give you more information about how to sign up and also give you more information about um, telling us if you're interested in a free trial. Cool. Looks like that might be all of the questions, um, unless you had any closing comments, Stephanie. No, I don't think so. I'll just give everybody a chance if there's, um, oh, yeah, one more question. Are there discounts available for nonprofits? Yes, there are. Um, so if you, if you end up um, talking to someone on the CEB staff, a consultant, they can go through in much more detail what discounts are available. But we do offer discounts for uh, legal aids and nonprofits. Mm -hmm. Looks like we have one more clarifying question about OnLaw, and they're asking, does practitioner include the materials contained in the OnLaw library for an area? Right. So, um, let, yeah, so let me take another a shot at answering that question. So what you do not get is the current online interface. But yes, you get all of the, the material contained in the online library. In some cases, you'll actually get some additional titles. Um, and, but those secondary sources are part of a new interface that's integrated with practitioner. So um, it doesn't include the exact same online interface that you're accustomed to. It has kind of an updated interface with potentially additional materials. I, so for example, I think in the Trust and Estates Library, we've added a few um, titles, uh, including um, some kind of forming and operating LLCs, because we got a lot of feedback that a lot of trust and estates attorneys needed those business formation tools as part of their trust and estates work. So we tried to add a few more titles to make it uh, useful. Um, so you'd get all of those secondary sources. It would just be in a, a new updated interface. Thanks so much, everybody.